cheap shit on my hand. Come on. Jesus Christ. Could have nearly landed on tent, that guy, man. Yes, people, welcome back to another video. So we're out for a quick overnighter. I've drove down to the Peak District. I've parked the car at the Derwent Overlook car park. I'm gonna to head to a place called Alport Castles or Alport Castles or something. So I've been working all day. Well, I say all day, I've been on an early shift. So I've been on a 7-3, finished work at three, got home about half three, got changed, had a brew, and then set off down to the Peak District. Managed to hit some rush hour traffic, so it took me like an hour and a half to get here, if not longer. So the time now, it's 6 p.m. So, got a couple hours of daylight left. I think this place is about three miles away. So plenty of time to go check it out, find some wet pitch and whack that tent up. Whoa. We've had a bloody Christmas tree fall down here. Stick that on back at whip. Take it home, eh? So by the looks of it, we're heading through a bit of woodland. So that's pretty decent. I know I'm guaranteed to find somewhere to pitch anyway, because even if there's nowhere at this Alport Castles, there seems to be loads of good flat ground surrounding it. So it should be all good. So as I was driving in towards that car park, there were a few signs outside at road saying no overnight parking. And then a big picture of a tent crossed out. So, I don't know. I've parked there anyway. And when me and my sister came to the Peak District last summer, I did a wild camp up on Back Tor. And we camped in that same car park then. So I don't know. I guess I'll find out. I'm sweating already, man. It's gonna be highly unlikely that I've not forgotten all, you know of how quickly I packed my bag. In fact, yeah, I've already forgotten something because I forgot my trekking poles. Because it's not a long distance, I'll be fine, hopefully. <laughs> I struggle walking through woodland at a quick pace. It just feels right close, really warm, humid. Windy out here though. It's opened up now. Pretty epic views. Sky's not clear, but there's no rain, so all is good. I think that could be the place over there, you know. Probably won't be able to pick it up on GoPro. There it is, first view of the tower down there. I think we're gonna head down here. Actually, looks like the path. So I'd say I've done pretty well for time. It's about three miles away to the car and it's five to seven, so not too bad. It's basically one path all the way up and a lot of it's got stone down. So it's really clear to see. Yeah, wind's dropped a bit now in this little valley bit. This place looks epic, man. Sick. 
carnage, mate. Carnage round here. Tempted to just get up there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. See if there's a flat spot at top. That'd be a decent place to pitch that. It's quite steep. But definitely doable, I think. Yeah. It's quite steep. Just traverse it a bit instead of going straight up. Guess your legs does that. Sheep shit on my hand. Nearly there. Buzzing. It's flat. <laughs> I think that'll be all right, mate. It's not a bad spot. Certainly got a nice view anyway. Little sunset over there. So quite often you see me carrying this on front, my chest pod, like on. And it's basically what I keep my drone in. That's the only reason why I always bring this. So I keep my drone just inside my woolly hat, just to protect it from banging against this. And then that's my second phone that I use to fly the drone. So let's fire that up. I was doing a time lapse, but it just fell over. <laughs> Bloody hell.
another surf flight. Come on, this is what it's all about. And we've actually got relatively clear blue skies at this side. But I can't complain at that, eh? Stunning location, this. Little woodland over there. Load of sheep just mooching about on tops. A few down there as well. I'll tell you something, it ain't half chilly when that little wind picks up. So I've gone for a down jacket, get nice and warm. Now I'm stationary, that's when you start getting cold after you've done your hike. So I'm gonna chill out, set up my bedding and that soon. But I think first, let's get some food on go, maybe a hot drink. So for food, just keeping it super simple tonight, just a steady budget life pot noodle. <laughs> That's poor that, innit? But like I say, I we're in a rush. So I'll probably crack that on in a bit. I think I'll have a brew first, warm up a bit, because it is nippy. Glad I brought my winter gear. I even said a couple of videos ago, it's probably going to be last at winter gear, and I was going to pack the solo away in hibernation until the colder months at back end of the year, but it's really dropping tonight. I think on the forecast, it's actually minus one. Minus one. And we're at back end of April when this is filmed. So we've got the last little bit of that sunset. All his pals are up there, man. This guy's just down there on his own. Gonna have to go up there, boss. Perfect. Quick little brew on go. Watching a bit of TV, got a nice little setup here. Phone there on tripod. Kitchen here, bedroom here. And you're over there. The sun set ages ago, but it's still quite bright outside. It's a nice little moon. So it won't be long before I shut this outer of the tent just so I can get a bit of warmth in here Jesus Christ could have nearly landed on tent that guy man helicopter coming back again they've had torch shining on ground it's more of a torch in it yeah. I hope they're just doing a bit of training and they're not just Looking for someone out there. Flying so low as well. I'm literally higher than the chopper is. You can see spotlights. Right guys, so that just about wraps it up for tonight. So I'm gonna get some well-deserved sleep. It's been quite a long day with obviously working and then coming out for a quick little camp. So I'll catch up with you in the morning. 
Peace out. In a bit. Ooh, morning, YouTube. It's a cold one this morning. Tent's got all frost on it. Like I say, it was supposed to drop to minus one last night. I think it dropped a little bit colder, to be honest, than that. The wind's picked up a little bit as well this morning, and that is bitter. So this is thought to be one of the biggest landslides in England. Or the biggest landslide in England. Right, I'm going to get this tent boxed off, pack it all away, and then I'll be on my travels. It is cold this morning. As soon as you take that down jacket off, don't say I packed it in my bag so I don't want to be hiking in that. Yeah, it's chilly. There we are, all done. Left no trace. Now I don't fancy climbing back down that bit that I came up yesterday. That is steep. So I think if we just keep going this way, it might level off a bit further up here. My hands are freezing. And I left my gloves in my down jacket, ah, which are in my bag. So just a three mile walk now. That's how cold it is. Right, so I've been doing a bit of checking up map. So over there is Back Tor, where I've camped before, and Derwent Edge. Then you've got Bamford Edge, that way. And then over there, you've got Mam Tor, right over there. And you can actually see, I think, Winnet's Pass. I think. I think that's the strongest spring gate in Peak District. Maybe the world. Got a proper spring back. All right, people, we're more or less back on the road now, where the car's parked. So it's probably a good time to wrap this video up here. If you've liked it, make sure you press like, drop a comment. If you've got any ideas or suggestions of places to camp all across the UK, let me know in the comments. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. What a stunning day. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out in a bit.